doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor. Our last discussion, we, we took the view that we're going to have to sort of unlearn um, some of the things uh, that we know and some of the products and the approaches that we take as institutions. And, and having served in President Macron's new financial pact private sector group, looking at some of these same issues, it became very clear that from the DFI perspective, it was really about let's line up um, some very long established views to create another program. And I, my biggest worry here is that we we're already positing DFIs as private capital mobilizers when DFIs have the worst record ever about mobilizing private capital. So I wonder if we should have an, more of an open mind and perhaps see if there's a different type of role uh, as opposed to mobilizing, because you you almost guarantee yourself uh, a, a role when we haven't established that you're the best placed in the market relative to the uh, you know the, the the continuum of risks and the institutions that can deliver that mobilization that you play that role. So I wonder if we're not. I feel a little bit lined up to endorse something that I fundamentally disagree with. That perhaps DFIs are best place to mobilize private capital at scale. I think we should think about the best role for DFIs and the best role for players and reimagine the architecture around this. A, 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 a 20 to 38 cents private capital mobilization when it's supposed to be $1 delivering $10 doesn't necessarily put you at the front of the queue. But I, of course, there's a great and important role for DFIs to play. But I just think that it's a little bit off that we start a conversation where we're trying to reimagine and look to the future to solve a, a gigantic problem that we step in and try to get us all on this same page about mobilization. I think that I think there should be an open and honest conversation about mobilization and who's best placed to play that role. Um, and in fact, DFIs may be able to, you know, play a much more concrete and, and catalytic role elsewhere. I just think we should be a bit more transparent and clear. Thank you. Um, Hubert, if I may come back to you. Um, yes. Uh, to, to what extent uh, have the conversations so far uh, addressed some of your, your points before? Not at all, not at all. But, uh, you know, like I say, you all have your mandates or DFIs and everyone has their own mandates. And we, as a as, as people, we, uh, we have a natural uh, in, grained biases. Um, this is about a complete reinvention of the system. People talk about institutional investment. It's not about institutional investment when you're talking about private capital mobilization at scale. It's about institutionalizing investment. And right now, what we're institutionalizing is the least competent player to mobilize into the system, which all then redesigns the system and, and 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 limits government's ability to be able to enfranchise capital to be mobilized at scale. And I think it's very difficult to have that type of conversation when we always think in terms of theories of change. When you what we really need to do is change the theory. That's why my first comment was this quick presumption that DFIs are the ones to mobilize capital. No, they are not. We shouldn't be thinking about a constituency being best placed to accomplish the end goal. We should be thinking about what's optimal for the new system and what's the natural and who's best placed to play that role within the natural habitat of risks. Whether And we should be agnostic to whomever can play that role. The market will determine who can best play that role. But when we come into these conversations, I already know that you know we have very entrenched views of the world. And and I just think that until we, as 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 humanity, can redesign and create a system that focuses on private capital mobilization fit for the future, we've got artificial intelligence coming. There will be mass job layoffs. We're going to have to reinvent what an SME really is. Even the way that we look at the classifications of SMEs of today, ten years from now, artificial intelligence in five years is going to completely redesign that. So, I think our ability to look forward is what's lacking and reimagine. And that's why I answered, I don't think so, because I haven't heard anything that's for forward looking. I hear this retro view of analyzing the history and hoping that that can inform the future when it can't. The future is moving at a pace now. This is the slowest level of innovation that we are confronted with today. And it's only going to get faster. We know that. Um, I'm not hearing, and it's going to be driven by these small businesses growing into large businesses, whether they become micro corporations and let AI do a lot of it, or whether it's 
universal basic income or universal basic dividend or whatever it is. I'm not hearing that level of thinking. Um, and I know that we fail without that level of thinking. Um, and so, so, so I don't want to sort of dominate too much, but you know, that's, that's just my, my, my medium length answer uh, to your question. We're stuck in the past. These models are stuck in the past. Our, our institutions are stuck in the past. Private sector as well. This is not a, uh, a you know, a, a us against anybody. We have to evolve and reimagine and recreate this future. That's moving much faster than all of our capacities and all of our uh, institutions. And that's why, you know, we have this uh, artificial intelligence that's making this, that's going to make us all redundant. And I just think that we really need to up our level of thinking and our capacity in game and open up our markets, development finance institutions, governments. You give finance to a company, you should be invested in the growth of that company, but then you close your market for that company to participate and grow and increase your capacity to provide finance, increase your ability to get dividends as equity investors. We need to, um, that's the way I, that's the way we look at the system's failures and the working groups like this are supposed to be designed if i understood it correctly to think about systems solutions uh um so so that would be my um just a little bit more than medium uh, scale uh, response to this i would hope that as dave looks at the the model it's a lot more forward looking it's a lot more oriented to making us all feel uncomfortable because we're not moving quickly enough we're not ambitious enough that's why all of the sdgs and all of these private capital mobilizations and all of these targets are going to keep us in business chasing uh, poverty reduction when we could be chasing prosperity and wealth creation and i think that's the mindset has to change and the system needs to be created um, to address that so let me i can see that uh, gila and thomas have their uh, their hand for intervention. So I'd love to hear everyone else's views. But uh, please don't, please don't, please understand that I'm not representing an institution. I'm trying to see what system we need to be successful as a world and as a, an economy to deal with existential threats. That's what I'm looking at. So it's not, I like this institution, this constituency, or I don't like that constituency. I'm trying to, I, I've, I've tried to evolve out of that and say, what is the system that we all need? Thank you. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.